Hello. Um, so, okay, so it's time to vlog again. Um, right, so we were just having a sort of online discussion all about the, uh, me as in me and my class, um, all about the notion of play. And it just got me thinking about how much play is used within what the processes that the students of CPP2 are doing and also then within the school because obviously with the new curriculum for excellence which is all promoting the idea of play and creativity and working together and collaborating then it's all really important and integral and not that I hadn't not considered it but I can see now if I look at it from an outside point of view how embedded it is in everything that's done um, and this idea that play leads to creativity and, new, and productivity and new ideas and and the idea that you can try things out and that kind of how that works um but it just got me really excited because i was thinking about just for example the warm-up that is done in the mornings is um a piece of dance and that was originally taught by gary and moe to the group and it was one minute long and they learned that and then the week after they had split in their pairs because they're within pairs they're they're working in the school in pairs and in those pairs they have to work together to create another minute to add on so every minute it's grown so at the end it'll be nine minutes long i believe because there's eight pairs on then gary murray's bit so it'll be nine minutes long piece of dance and each bit is totally different so not only have they had to create their own little bit they've also got to remember everything that came before it and when that puts when that's on in the room in the morning, it's just like a total change in the energy. It's just like happens, ding, and suddenly they're all up and about and making and, and doing this dance and having fun and having a laugh. And if it goes wrong, it goes wrong, it doesn't really matter. Which is I think the point of it. Like it shouldn't be about, you know, them having to get each perfect step. And it's not about that, it's about having fun and enjoying it. And once they've got that energy in the room, they can start to creatively play and make, oh, I suppose using that word, play, to create the next bit that they're doing. And they're currently they're working on a performance which they're doing in the school on the first day that they're going to sort of announce the project. And during that performance, it involves a lot, there is movement within it, and which I don't know whether would have been in there had they not integrated the dance into some of the warm-up and things like that and how it's all about ideas and throwing things in there and seeing what works and of course kids development they need this they need this play and I noticed when we went into the school this is sort of charged energy as soon as you come into the room it's into the school there's like a, st a difference it's like you have outside it's really cold a horrible day raining you go inside and it's like zzz, zzz, this, this energy and chatter and people talking and the school is really um done on a sort of open plan it's like a, a really unusual school for that because I mean I remember being at school and it being just set classrooms one after the other and that you know you had your year that room that room that room and you were sort of in your own class and you'd obviously play there but they encouraged within this school for there to be play within different years um, and even with the project that we're doing now the four year uh, the four p four to seven yes, are being split up into five groups, so they're um, having, oh, I can't remember the word, it will come to me, but um, vertical learning, that's it, it's vertical learning, so they're splitting them up, so that they're learning, so an eight-year-old will be with an 11-year-old in the same class, and that does mean that you get more, yeah, you get more creativity, because an eight-year-old will sit and learn, or will learn off an 11 year old and an 11 year old will then play with an 8 year old and that sort of dynamic is brilliant Will I think because in real life you don't spend all your life with the same colleagues of the same age in in a real situation you just don't that's not how the world works and um, once you get out of education you're with anyone even when you go to university there'll be people who will be of different ages and different backgrounds uh, encouraging that within a school that's so multicultural as well with all the different languages is brilliant and seeing that the school is like open plan there is noise everywhere there's like this current of noise and but and as well as it being open plan means that the teachers you can hear or see whether like has someone put it you can see whether a class is going well or not because you can literally see it which is 
a different to when you go into some schools where they'll just be in their own class and n unless the headmaster or headmistress happens to walk in at that precise moment, no one really knows whether it's going well or not. Which is, I think, is obviously a lot of pressure for a class, but also shows a lot about, um, you know, the way that you that that they work, and that they're and now that we're they're moving into this more creative way of thinking with the new curriculum and embedding it into what they do, I think it is probably opening up more opportunities for them. Um, yeah, so I was just thinking about the idea of play and how you can see that the teachers have to think on their feet and they have to, in a way, even though they've got this formality, like they're called Mr or Miss, but, and they are all Mrs or Sir, or, and they have this formality with that, and they have the structure where they have the, the bell goes and or that kind of thing happens. But within it, like, it allows for them to, to, to use their skills to play and the way they teach, they have to think of all the different ways of thinking whether they whether the children are kinetic le kinesthetic kinetic learners kinesthetic kinetic learn by doing or whether they learn by hearing or or like oral whether they learn by speech and all these different ways and for a teacher to be able to do that they have to be able to just think on their feet so they're very much I I mean I never really would have thought it before when I was at school, but they are in a way artists because they have to go through, especially now with this new curriculum, they have to think on their feet, they have to be willing to think of things going in a different way because they just have this conclusion to get to and how they get there is their own way. As long as by the end of week six, the children will know this, they have to, they find their own way, which then is amazing when you get these kind of projects going into schools where they can do that, where they can spend their time playing and using all the skills that they learnt to create something at the end. Because it's not saying that we want these kids to be new performers or anything like that. It's about the idea that they learn differently and every child learns differently. And for different subjects, learn in a different, slightly different way. And um, I just think that's really exciting when you see that. And when you can... Um, when you see that when it was just a couple of hours in a classroom, when you actually see that happening. And uh, that kind of, the notion of the word play, I think should be, should be bigger. And um, Emily McGurian in my class put up a link for a TED talk. And they're really interesting. And his name was, his name was, I shall tell you his name now. His name was, Steve Keel, and it's called A Manifesto for Play for Bulgaria and Beyond. And I just watched it, which got me really excited, made me want to do this blog now <laughs> rather than later. And um, because he was right about what he says that doing things in such sort of a totalitarian way, do, 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 this is what you do, doesn't actually make you aspire to want to be more creative. And it's the same with children. They don't learn that way. They don't learn in, in just strict, this is this is how you do it. And uh, sit at a desk and be quiet and, and write this like this. And here are your answers. Because those skills, okay, some kids are good at memorizing things for exams and things like that. But in the real world, is life like that? Is life like an exam every day where you just sit down and you have a series of things which you're recalling and just writing down? You haven't actually learned anything. You've just learned how to pass an exam. You've not learned the actual subject matter. You've not gone into depth about that subject. You've just learned how to pass the exam, which is totally not what you want kids to do because how else are you going to get new creative people who are going to go off into the world and be the new entrepreneurs and create the new businesses because the people who are creative who are entrepreneurs who are um thinking about the next thing that they want to do and are willing to explore and experiment are the people who are going to be driving the economy because they're the ones who are going to go and make those jobs make those businesses happen and afterwards put them down uh, put put them there for people to go and work at because they'll be there for those They'll, they'll be part of it. Um, I've just realised I've rambled for 9 minutes 39 seconds. Wow. And a YouTube uploader is only 10 minutes, so I've better go. But I will come straight back up with another blog because I'm really excited about this. So 
part two coming up.